Then after understanding the epithelium, let's talk about, you know, let's start with the diseases of the respiratory system. Now, how I have divided my discussion uh, with you for the diseases of respiratory system. See, I'm going to talk about the acute and the chronic diseases. Now, in the acute disease, the most important thing, which gives us a hell lot of questions in the exam. And, you know, in COVID-19, it was one of the more, you know, big reason for taking lives of the individuals. So, I think that, you know, in the coming exams, it might become a important entity for as far as the questions are concerned. So, I am going to talk about ARDS that is acute respiratory distress syndrome. Then in the chronic we have divided the disease as you all must be have already studied into obstructive and restrictive. Now, in the obstructive we will be talking about these four the emphysema, chronic bronchitis, bronchial asthma and bronchiectasis and you all must be knowing that emphysema and chronic bronchitis together they are called as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. When you when you club them together, they are called as COPD. And in restrictive lung diseases, I am going to talk about the pneumoconiosis and the fibrosing lung disorder. This is about the diseases of the respiratory system which we are going to do. So, let's start one by one. Let's start with ARDS. Now, what is ARDS? It is acute respiratory distress syndrome. It is acute respiratory distress syndrome. It is also called as diffuse alveolar damage that is DAD. This is DAD. It is also called as stiff lung and it is also called as high line membrane disease. Okay, why it is called as all these? We will be discussing with the pathophysiology of ARDS. Now, as far as the etiology is concerned for ARDS, see for etiology, we say that you know aspiration plays a very important role. Now, this aspiration, guys, aspiration of any kind of foreign particle, I mean, it could be an aspiration. Uh, which is happening uh, in a person who is alcoholic, let's say, and uh, some, he has uh, aspirated the gastric content or it can be an aspiration of anything for any foreign particle from outside. So, any of these things, any kind of aspiration basically, they are going to play a very major role in the pathophysiology of ARDS. But uh, more importantly, uh, we have got infections which play a very, very, very important role. Okay, And in the infections, I would like to put a focus on something called as pneumonia. Okay, Even sepsis also uh, have a role in ARDS. But pneumonia happens to be one of the most common cause for the etiology of ARDS. Okay. okay. Then uh, what else can cause it? What else? Uh, we can have uh, the presence of some tumors which can might lead to the presence of ARDS in an individual. Now, once the etiology is over, then we should understand, you know, what is the uh, pathophysiology for ARDS. Now, what I have tried to do here is that uh, I have tried to show you an alveoli and uh, how an alveoli uh, is properly lined by and I have divided this alveoli into two halves. Now, we have not done anything uh, different in both of them, they are same right now, but as in how the pathophysiology will move on, we will be making some changes. But initially what you should understand is about the structure. So if we talk about the alveoli, the lining of the alveoli, see I told you that there are two exceptions for uh, places where we do not see pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Because if you see the epithelial lining of this alveoli, you do not see any cilia. You are not seeing any cilia, you are not seeing columnar cells, they are good looking, you know, they say they are squamous cells. So, what we have is very thin line of cells we have. What are these cells? These are type 1 pneumocytes, type 1. So, all the pink color cells which I have made, they are type 1 pneumocytes and these in between, these triangular, you know, elevated type of cells, they are type 2 pneumocytes. So, one thing is very sure that, you know, uh, for all the students who are studying in their medical colleges, when you study this, it, they, you know, this is also a viva question that which pneumocytes are more, type 1 or type 2. So, you can see, I mean, there is uh, no hidden fact here that type 1 are going to be more. Okay. Now, what are, we have made? We have made a macrophage also. Now, these macrophages, they reside inside the alveoli. We know because when we studied the inflammation chapter, I told you that there are macrophages in the alveoli and we call them as alveolar macrophages or dust cells. We have already written it. Okay. So, and uh, these alveoli, they are lined by uh, these pulmonary capillaries 
and these pulmonary capillaries obviously what I have tried to show you is a neutrophil. Now why I am calling it a neutrophil uh, and why only I have made a neutrophil because we are studying a disease which is which starts with the name acute respiratory distress syndrome and as soon as we are talking about something which is an acute in nature obviously WBC which we are going to be uh, having uh, an, an association with would be a neutrophil. And uh, once you are talking about a neutrophil just a quick recap that neutrophils will have minimum 3 to 5 lobes minimum 3 maximum 5 lobes. So I have tried to make uh, you know the 3 lobes in a neutrophil minimum. Now we will see that what happens in uh, ARDS. Now see this type of pneumocytes okay before going into the pathophysiology let's 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 talk about uh, what is this type 1 pneumocytes function. Now when you talk about the type 1 pneumocyte function this this is a kind of a cell guys which is going to help you in gaseous exchange. Okay, so if let's say there is something happening to type 1 pneumocytes, that certainly means, I mean you can understand yourself, that certainly means that the person will not be able to have any kind of oxygen diffusion. So if you know you are not able to do oxygen and carbon dioxide here and there, it becomes a problem. Patient would suffer from hypoxemia, right? There would be no oxygen uh, exchange which will be happening. Now if somebody asks you what is the function of a type 2 pneumocyte, now, generally one function you all know that is you know. Uh, we are studying it like from physiology also you understand that type 2 pneumocytes they are something which are for surfactant production. So one fun fun function is surfactant production this you understand already but there is one more function which is for type 2 pneumocytes that is of repair. So there are two functions guys okay never forget that there are two functions one is surfactant production and the second function which we have is of repair. This, these are the two functions of type 2 pneumocytes whereas as far as the type 1 pneumocyte is concerned we are only having an gaseous exchange with that. Alveolar macrophages as I have discussed already with you they are also known by the name dust cells. They are also known by the name dust cells. So this is all about the normal thing which I wanted to show you. Now let us imagine let us come on to the pathophysiology. In the pathophysiology what is happening is now let us imagine that there is an antigen let us say there is this antigen, reason could be any beta, any reason could be but this is an antigen, it is a foreign particle the person is aspirating let us say. Now once this antigen enters, now when this antigen enters it is taken up by a macrophage, okay. We are going to write everything, do not worry. So it is going to taken up by a macrophage. Now what is going to happen? Once it is taken up by a macrophage, the macrophage is going to get activated. Now once this macrophage activates, it is going to secrete certain mediators. Now because you know there are many mediators which will be, it will be secreting like IL-1, IL-6 and even IL-8. So but IL-8 happens to be the most important here because we need you need to kill that antigen and for that you need the neutrophils and we know from our knowledge of pathology in the chapter of inflammation that if you want to call the neutrophils you need interleukin-8. So the only mediator which I am going to uh, show here is that it is secreting a mediator called as interleukin 8. Now as soon as this mediator is secreted what happens is that this mediator goes like this and talks to the neutrophil. It is going and talking to the neutrophil. Now as soon as the neutrophil got this mediator, neutrophil understood that okay I need to go into the alveoli because there is calling which is happening. Now this neutrophil because of this mediator tries to go out of the endothelial walls this the pulmonary capillary wall. So now what, what we are going to show is that the neutrophil is trying to move out. Now when this neutrophil is trying to move out that means there is a permeability which has happened. Now once the permeability has happened and we are saying that the neutrophils are moving out that means with this the plasma will also come out. So what will happen is that you would see what you would see a lot of you know edema at this point. So these dots which I am trying to make at this place this I am trying to show that there is a lot of edema here okay. So what is this? This is a lot of edema which is present. Now once these neutrophils guys these neutrophils they are going to move in. So now the neutrophil has come in again we are going to make a neutrophil here. Now once this neutrophil comes inside now after coming inside this neutrophil understand that there is an antigen which is there. and you know this neutrophil secretes uh, some enzymes uh, from the toxic granules and those enzymes you know they are let us say proteases. 
Now, protease, we have discussed this before that you know when we are putting up a uh, A's, when we are putting up A's behind anything that means cutting. Now, protease that means it's gonna cut the proteins. Now everything is made up of protein only. So it's gonna do a massive damage. It's gonna do a massive damage to these alveolar walls. So what's gonna happen is that because of this enzyme secretion and this enzyme causing a pro massive damage to days, this all will be getting fibrosed because you know if th there would be such a massive damage, how would you even think of that there would be a regeneration? No, there won't be. If you cannot regenerate something, there would be fibrosis. So there is a lot of fibrosis which will come at this place. One thing. Second, when this, you know, when these neutrophils are moving out, and I am saying that you are having these plasma, you know, this plasma here. So there is a molecule called as fibrin. You know, we have studied that in the in uh, hematology. Okay, so we have got fibrin also. So this fibrin, which is present around these alveolar walls and the massive damage which has happened and due to which the fibrosis is happening. So together what happens is these two things mix up and eventually what you are going to find that all the cells are dead, all the cells are dead and if you go and look at the alveoli now, this alveoli is going to give you this. Everything is gone guys, everything is gone, okay. All these cells are dead, even this is dead, this is dead and this is dead. So everything is dead. Now what it becomes? It looks like a very shiny glassy appearance, okay. And this kind of a shiny glassy uh, smooth appearance when we see inside a biopsy around the alveoli, we call it as a hyaline membrane. So because now you are getting a hyaline membrane, you call it as a hyaline membrane disease. This is the reason why acute respiratory distress syndrome is called as hyaline membrane disease, okay. Secondly, the second name, if you remember, the second name was diffuse alveolar damage. Now, you can understand doctors that, you know, the whole alveolar wall is gone, right? This is the area, this is the side of alveoli which I am saying that which is which is a pathological and this is what I have shown the normal thing. So you have to imagine that whole of the alveolar wall, even that wall will also be getting damaged. So whole alveoli is gone. Na? If whole of the alveoli is gone, what kind of damage it becomes? Diffuse damage. So it is diffuse alveolar damage. So two names we have understood. One is diffuse alveolar damage. Second is hyaline membrane disease. Now you tell me if you are putting a lot of fibrosis somewhere. So if there is a lot of fibrosis happening, will that, uh, you know, will that organ where the lots of fibrosis is happening, will that organ be hard or uh, will it be soft? Obviously, you know, this collagen, fibrosis and all those things, they make the things hard. Okay. So what is the important property of a lung? What is the important property by which we are able to respire? That is obviously, you know, recoil, compliance. So the problem is that because of this extensive fibrosis which we are having, because of this, the lungs become very, very, very stiff, very stiff. So that is how we call it as a stiff lung. What do you call it as? Stiff lung. Okay. So this is the whole pathophysiology of uh, the ARDS. Now what we are going to do is we are going to write it down in a flowchart type. Okay. Now please write. So what's happening is that let's say there is an antigen entry. Now once the antigen has entered, what it has done, if you can recall from our discussion, it is going to do a macrophage activation. It's going to do a macrophage activation. Once the macrophages are activated, they are going to call the neutrophils by secreting of an interleukin which is interleukin 8. This is the most important one, that is, a, that is why I am writing only this, okay. Then once there is a secretion of interleukin 8, there will be neutrophil recruitment. What's going to happen? The neutrophil recruitment is going to happen. Now once the neutrophils are recruited, after that what will happen is that they are going to secrete the, their granules or we can say they are going to secrete their enzymes. Now once they have secreted their granules or their enzymes, what's going to happen is, you know, what is this? This actually I am talking about something which I told you, protease. Because it is a very, it plays a very important role, that is why I am only writing protease here. 
so that secretes the granules of the enzyme like protease and because of it what happens is that there is a damage to alveolar wall plus as we have discussed there would be what will be happening fibrin deposition so these two things are going to happen once these two things are going to happen what you know due to this when i when i'm saying there would that there, there would be damage to the alveolar walls what is there in the alveolar wall please please see what is there in the alveolar wall in the alveolar wall we had type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes so when i'm saying that there is a damage to the alveolar wall i mean that there is a damage of type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes this is what we mean now when we say there is a damage to type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes what is the function of type 1 pneumocyte guys the function of type 1 pneumocyte is as we have discussed there is gaseous exchange and the function of type 2 pneumocytes is a repair plus surfactant production these are the two things i told you so if there is the damage basically what we are saying that there will be a damage to type 1 there would be damage to type 2 so there would be no gaseous exchange there would be no repair no surfactant production and one more thing i am you know drawing it here that sometimes they ask you which will be damaged more obviously when type 1 are more in number so there will be more damage to type 1 so there will be type 1 pneumocytes damage more as compared to type 2 pneumocytes now once there is no gaseous exchange no repair no surfactant production you what do you call this you call this actually the dad what is dad diffuse alveolar damage what it will lead to it can also lead to hyaline membrane disease and what else it will give you the stiff lung okay so this is what this is the whole pathogenesis which we have discussed now once we are through with this let's try to see some images let's try to you know know a fact that how a normal alveoli looks and what exactly we are getting in a highline membrane disease so if you look at this image guys this is a normal alveolar lining now this normal alveolar lining see this is this is one alveoli okay this is a one alveoli here now in this this is the type 1 pneumocyte which is very thin very good looking and these triangulars thing you know this elevated cells these big cells which you are getting these are the type 2 pneumocytes so if you look for yourself if i just zoom it for you if it if you look for yourself guys the cells which are you know these very thin kind of cells which we have these are type 1 and they are more these kind of triangular kind of a cells you know elevated cells they are very less so type 2 is less type 1 is more this is how a normal alveoli looks to us and now if you put your focus on this image here now if you see here what's happening these are all alveoli okay if i see this and compare it with this so what are you getting you are getting a deposition of a pinkish color material pinkish color material is getting deposited now this pinkish color material which is getting deposited this is making it what this is making a highline membrane this there is a whole alveolar section is damaged you call it as diffuse alveolar damage and because of this i am repeating again because of so much of fibrosis which is happening here the lungs become stiff and we call them as stiff lungs